If you don't know Rankin Bass through Rudolph, there's a good chance that you know them from their other big winter mascot, Frosty the Snowman. And there's actually a lot of similarities between the two characters. While Frosty didn't start out as a store mascot or a children's book character, he was actually birthed from a song. In fact, it was a song recorded by Gene Autry who was the same person who originally performed Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, so he can be seen as something of a little brother to the bright-nosed buck. He's also, much like Rudolph, seen plenty of adaptations into other media and has almost as much popularity and different stories told about him in the same way that Rudolph has, becoming a Christmas staple and a piece of its folklore despite being a relatively modern invention. Which brings us to the first real attempt at adapting Frosty into television, 1969's Frosty the Snowman. The day before Christmas, a massive snowstorm rolls through town. It also happens to be the first snow of the season, which makes it quite a magical bit of snow indeed. And when the children are led out of school that day, after an abysmal performance from the world's worst magician, Professor Hinkle, they decide to make a snowman. And when Hinkle tosses away his hat, and the children place it atop the snowman's head, he comes to life, proclaiming himself to be Frosty. But because it's actually still pretty warm out, despite the snow, the children decide they have to get Frosty to the North Pole to keep him from melting. And after failing to be able to afford a ticket there, Frosty, a young girl named Karen, and Hinkle's rabbit Hocus Pocus, sneak aboard a northbound refrigerated train car all while Hinkle pursues in an effort to get his hat back, believing that the hat itself is magic and capable of making him millions. Despite the fact that he has owned it for who knows how long and it hasn't done him any good so far, so... Yeah. Like last time, this is one of the shorter specials, only clocking in at under half an hour. And it's also a very simple story, though considerably more light-hearted when compared to Little Drummer Boy. But I do feel that it sort of hurts the special this time. The entire story, despite being as simple and short as it is, feels really padded out. And unlike the last two specials, which did manage to give their characters some actual personality and made me care about them a little bit, most of the characters here are very forgettable. Yes, Frosty is childlike and charming, but most of his lines come right after he's brought to life. But once the whole Journey to the North Pole segment starts up, which takes up a good two-thirds of the special, he loses any sort of characterization he had, and most of the story is just delivered to us via the narrator. Only one of the kids is even named, Karen, who also happens to be the only one to accompany him on his journey north, but she doesn't really have a personality to speak of either. She's just sort of there for some of the events later in the plot where she almost dies out in the cold. Professor Hinkle is probably the most memorable character in the special because he is quite literally a mustache twirling villain. Like, everything about his design is basically made to invoke a snidely whiplash sort of vibe. And while you do kind of feel sorry for him and how pathetic he is when he's introduced, that sort of goes out the window when he's willing to let a child freeze to death, or let a sentient being die of heat exposure for his own selfish gains. I do want to say that there is a bit of whimsical charm to the story, but it does have a slightly similar problem to Rudolph. While the story is much better structured, stuff just sort of happens. It's more like a roadmap for a story than an actual story. It takes us from point A to point B just fine most of the time, but there's nothing to really keep your attention. I would go as far as to say it's downright boring for the most part, and while I didn't find Rudolph that good or Cricket to be memorable, I could at least say they weren't boring. But Frosty, I do think is more on the boring side of the scale. This is also the first time I'm not really a fan of our narrator, played by Jimmy Durante, who, don't get me wrong, does a good enough job delivering the tale and joining in for the singing, but he has a very distinctive voice and delivery, which is cool sounding, but I don't think it fits with the storybook nature he's trying to tell. Apologies for the horrible impersonation. In terms of animation, we're obviously back to traditional 2D, and I do have to say I think it's much better than Cricket on the Hearth. It's still very limited, but the character design is much more simplified and cartoonish here. And remember, Cricket had some pretty simplified designs to begin with, 
but it works a lot better here because they're not trying to go for any sort of realism alongside the simplicity. The animation is a little bit smoother at times, but it seems to rotate between choppy and smooth quite often, and it can get a little distracting, though I will admit I find the character designs much more appealing. But the sound design is another thing entirely. There's some weird stuff going on here. Voice and sound effect syncing is off in several places, and in some instances, it is so off that it comes off as hilariously incompetent. There's at least one instance where a voice was changed at some point in production. Yeah, shall we call him Harold? Uh, Bruce? And above all, the sound effects, while they are much more plentiful here than in some of the other specials, fall squarely on the much more annoying side of the spectrum, I'm sad to say. The one interesting thing about this special that I actually really like about it is how they handle its song. And yes, only one song, because while this is counted as a musical, the only song in it is Frosty the Snowman. No other songs to be found anywhere. But rather than have it play only once, the song itself, in addition to being used as background dressing throughout the special, is also split up and spread out throughout the runtime. Like, they'll do a verse, then plot happens, then do a verse, then plot happens, and then the special ends on the very last verse of the song. It's actually kind of clever, even if I don't really care for the rendition of the song used here. Again, Jimmy Durante's delivery doesn't really seem to fit with the song's chipper attitude, and when he's not singing, it's mostly taken over by a chorus of young kids who basically just shout the lyrics to the rhythm of the song. If you can't tell, I didn't really gravitate much to this one, but I mostly find it very boring. I can't really call it horrible, though I will say it's very mediocre. This one probably would only appeal to very young children at this point, whereas a couple of the last few specials we looked at I do think had some entertainment value for everyone in the family. But this is one I think you can safely skip over. It's not the last time we'll be seeing Frosty during this marathon, and I'm hopeful that his later outings are a bit more interesting. But this first one? Yeah, you can pretty much get the same effect by just listening to the song.